Hi, in this video I'm going to talk about a piece of gear you might not see all too often in the synth setup. The Line 6 Helix. I often use it as a MIDI controller and jack of all trades in my setup. And today I'd like to share with you how I use it and why I think it's great. So let's get started. One thing I like to do is assigning mute pads to the foot switches. Here I've got this little beat and I can mute parts by pressing the pads to the side on the deluge. Now I want to be able to do this from the helix. I will start with the kick. On the helix I go to the command center. I use the joystick to select foot switch 1 and I choose the note on command. I'll just leave the note at C3, it's not getting in the way of anything here. Now when I press the foot switch it simply sends that note to whatever it is connected to. It is set to momentary, so it only sends the note while the foot switch is being pressed. I press customize to give it a name. I will call it kick. I could also customize the color of the light around the foot switch, but I'm not doing that here. As you can see, it now says kick above the foot switch. When I press it, nothing happens yet because nothing's assigned to that note. I press and hold learn and the pad I want to assign. Still holding both, I press the foot switch on the helix. As expected, pressing the foot switch now mutes the kick on the deluge. Let's hear if it actually works. Yes, works like a charm, very nice. I'm going to do the same thing now for all the instruments in this kit. The snare is next. Of course, I have to use a different note here. I just pick the next one, C sharp 3, and I will call it snare. The Helix comes with an editor software, so you could also do this on a computer if you prefer to. The labeling might be a bit easier with an actual keyboard. I prefer to do it on the unit itself, um, and I think the process is actually pretty pain-free. For the Hyatt, I'm gonna use D3. Since this is actual MIDI note info, you could also play a synth with this, a simple bass part, for example, by assigning a couple of root notes. Of course, you can also assign the same MIDI notes to multiple pads. I decided to assign this cymbal sound to the Hyatt as well, because it kind of serves the purpose of an open hat. Now they both mute when I press the foot switch. I'm going to fast forward through the rest of this, because I think you get the idea. I decide to assign a dedicated foot switch to my open hat after all. The leading in assignment is easy, just hold shift and press the pad. It's now not blinking anymore, which means nothing's learned to it. This is just for the purpose of showing you. I can also just override a previous assignment by learning a new one. You might be thinking, why not just use the deluge's mute button? The cool thing about this is that I always have access to the mutes this way. I might be somewhere completely else on the deluge, maybe going crazy with the master effects or something. This way, I still have instant access to all the mutes and don't have to navigate into the kit clip. Another thing I like to do is to assign a foot switch to the play button. The helix usually goes on the floor and it's just nice to always have it right there in case of emergencies. Or sometimes I start a tune with just a guitar and want to start the sequencer without having to use my hands. Tapping the tempo also works nicely to make sure the beat comes in, in sync. Assigning the play or tap buttons works exactly the same. I choose a MIDI note for the foot switch. I label it play. Then learn by holding learn and play and then pressing the foot switch. Another neat thing about the Helix is that it's not only a MIDI controller, but primarily an audio processor. I like to use it as a mixer for things I want to feed back into the deluge. Here, the signal of the mini log is going into the Helix. You can tell because the little circle turns slightly green. This is a synth clip. I'm gonna turn it into a MIDI clip and send it to the Siren. I turn the MIDI channel to 5 because that's where my Siren receives MIDI. I can't hear it yet because it's not routed back into the deluge yet. 
The indicator LED tells me that the MIDI is being sent. The Helix has four stereo audio channels, seven inputs and eight outputs. By default, we can only see two though, one for each CPU. To access more, I have to insert an effects block to be able to split the channel. I then have to move down both the effect block and the junction until I finally get access to a second input source. I really don't like how the Helix handles this. It feels like a missed opportunity where it could have made a fine mixer. Now I select guitar as the input source. That's where the Moog Siren is plugged in. And we can finally hear it. The same logic applies to the outputs. I have to move the junction down to get two individual ones. In this case, it doesn't make a difference because it's all being routed to the same place anyways, the deluge's input. I did it anyway for OCD-ish reasons, I guess. Now the mini log is on channel one and Siren on channel two. On the bottom row, I'm going to add my little modular. I have it plugged into the aux input. This top row is a MIDI clip on channel 8, where my mini lock gets MIDI. So you're actually hearing the mini lock when I'm playing those pads. Again, the green light, don't ask me why they didn't pick a brighter color. I'm starting the playback and both Siren and Minilog are playing. To adjust their respective volumes, I either use their own volume controls or I can insert a gain block and use that. Most, if not all, effect blocks also have a volume control already integrated. Controlling the volume this way is not very convenient. Like I said, as a mixer, the unit isn't all that great. But it offers some very nice effects. I'm gonna add a shimmer reverb to the mini lock signal. The controls of an effect can also be controlled via MIDI. Kind of the reverse of what I did before when I used the Helix to send MIDI in order to control the deluge. For a quick demonstration purposes, I'm going to use the pre-assigned global CCs. Since the latest Helix update CC 75 to 80 controlled the six knobs below the screen. I press hold a gold knob and turn the select knob to choose a CC number. Now the parameters change when I turn the gold knob. I could also assign a dedicated CC to any parameter. It would then stay locked to the parameter. And I could go crazy with automation and sequencing and whatnot. The global CCs, of course, affect whatever the screen is currently showing. Assigning an effect to a foot pedal on the Helix is very easy. I just touch the foot switch and confirm by pressing OK. Now I can bypass it by pressing the foot switch. By just touching it, I can call up its menu onto the screen. There's also a lot of effects that sync to a MIDI clock. Delays, of course, but also tremolos, filters, and so on. Or, for example, this cool ratchet-like effect that came with the latest update. By pressing on the knobs, I switch from milliseconds to time divisions. I assign this to a foot switch as well. I press it to engage it. You can hear the slicing happens in sync with the deluge now. 
I haven't really figured out this effect entirely, but it sure looks like loads of fun. Some effects have a second or even a third page. You get to them by using the page buttons to the right of the screen. If I press the action button, I can move the effect block and change the order of things. Here I put the reverb after the slicer. Again, by touching a foot switch, I can easily call up its menu. In this case, the reverb. All the while, the mute controls for the drum kit are all still right there. I'm trying a different synced effect, some kind of filter. The Helix offers quite an extensive collection of effects. And many of them, in my opinion, sound pretty good. Some of the effects I might not really use on guitar, but can lead to really interesting results on other instruments. The Helix also has an XLR input with the phantom power. Uh, so you can easily hook up a mic and feed anything you'd like into it. I have also used it live in the past to process my vocals. There's also the not so flashy but useful stuff like EQs and such. Here I am applying a low cut to the mini law. So it doesn't interfere as much with the bass. The note on command is one of many commands that the switches can send. The others are MIDI CC, continuous or toggle, bank or program changes, MMC or MIDI machine control, external amp switching, CV, continuous or toggle, or hotkey commands to your computer. And then there's presets or snapshots within the Helix you can easily call up by assigning them to a foot switch. I'm going to use a CC toggle now to control a parameter on the siren now. I keep this sheet always near the siren so I can quickly look up CCs. I go to the command center and move the cursor to an unused switch. This time I'm going to choose CC toggle instead of note on. I choose MIDI channel 5, like I mentioned, this is what the siren is set to. And I'm gonna assign the cutoff, because that's what you always go for first, right? Its CC number is 19. Dim and lit value let me define the values the switch is gonna toggle between. You can hear now how the filter opens up when I engage the switch. In real life, I often use this on volume to instant mute. A shift function on the deluge that, to my knowledge, you can't assign external controllers to, unfortunately. For gradual parameter changes, instead of toggling, you can use the expression pedal. I'm getting out my MIDI implementation chart once more. I'm going to assign the vibrato amount to it. So 
so I'm setting the CC number to 13. The onboard expression pedal can be used as expression pedal 1 or expression pedal 2. I have to press the nose switch to toggle to expression pedal 1. It's kind of hard to do with the helix on the stand. It's easier when it's on the floor and you can step on it. The helix has two jack sockets in the back for additional expression pedals, giving you a total of three. Before I move on to program changes, I want to mention I think this music turned out rather fitting as background music for an explanatory video such as this one. Don't you agree? Uh, but yes, the Helix also receives program changes. I'm going to save this preset so I can recall it from the deluge. Set lists are recalled with CC messages and destinations with program changes. If I'm already in the correct set list, I only need the program change. So I'm adding one to the dummy MIDI clip I already used for the CC control. It's the one with MIDI channel 1. I go into the clip and press select. I press select again to select program change. Now you can already see the presets on the helix moving along. I usually assign them like that. This way I'm sure I picked the right number. I press select again to confirm. I am saving this song on the deluge. Now when I load the track on the deluge, the MIDI commands and effect settings on the Helix are loaded along with it. This is super useful in a live setting. Especially since everything's labeled nicely. So I don't have to remember where I put all my effects and commands. And the colors are a nice touch too. You can come up with your own color code. For example, make the mute for the kick always red. That makes it super easy to spot, even in a dim stage setting. This big guy is a master volume control. For individual volumes, again, I can use a game block. I think the mini log is very loud, so I'm doing that now. So, these are the things I use the Helix for most often, especially in combination with the Deluge. It's by far not all you can do with it though. Uh, in conclusion, let me offer some final thoughts on whether I think it's worth it as a MIDI controller. If you're merely looking for a MIDI controller, I guess that wouldn't justify the cost of a Helix if you also like to play guitar occasionally, sing or play acoustic instruments. For any type of hybrid setup really, this thing is just amazing. It's quite big and really heavy, that can be a disadvantage, and I guess it's not cheap. Um, but it has tons of great features too. The main ones I'd like to point out being the really nice labels for the switches and the color LEDs, great connectivity, lots of audio ins and outs, and even the CV out, uh, and obviously its MIDI capabilities. It's the main reason I got mine. And I can comfortably say it's pretty hassle-free to use. So I hope you found this interesting and thank you a lot for watching.